It is Drift Week 8. We're at Fontana Village, an amazing time down by Dragon's Tale. Tale of the Dragon. There we go. Thank you for correcting me. Um, I have Taylor Ray with me. I'm Aaron. I want to ask him some questions. He has a beautiful YouTube channel that's super humble, some super aggressive and not humble cars like his Miata and his... <laughs> the vet. His vet, he's got so many cool projects like his trailer, he's got a beautiful shop, he's got so much going on. When I met him, he was not nearly as successful. Nope. He was very much the same person though. And he gets to accomplish so much through his YouTube channel and like kind of the sky's the limit. You see other YouTubers around you, whatever they can dream, they can build. Because right. you guys work so hard and you have great audience and so much support from you know, everybody buying your raffle tickets to make you millionaires. It's not a, a raffle. You can't call it oh, okay. a, a waffle. No, it's not even that. Okay. It's Whatever it is. It's a sweepstakes. I like, right? I like Chill. triggering him. Chill. The, sweeps, Chill. the sweepstakes. <laughs> um, no, I'm just saying like these guys can build whatever they can dream up because they have such supportive audiences and everybody else around them and they're doing such cool stuff. They are kind of like what option video was, you know, 20 years ago. They're the, they're the trendsetters, the influencers, which I always hated that term. And then you're like, God, that is so apt. Yeah, I'm not, like, a, I'm not a fan of that term. But I know, that, but it's, I, it's very accurate. I don't like being, I don't, like, it, it's so weird when people ask me what I do for a living. You know, you like if I meet people. someone, I'm just like, I, I say, I tell them I build cars. And then if they start asking a lot of questions about that, I'm like, I do YouTube. <laughs> you know, because I'm like, I can't really explain that I build cars in any way that makes sense and is profitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but like. Uh, whatever. So what Sorry. is your five-year like goals, projects, plans? What do you want to accomplish? It doesn't have to be anything like specific, or that's, it can be super heavy. specific. Um, it's a good question. I would say definitely want to finish my shop stuff, which I should be done with that soon. We've kind of been hustling on that because um, we want to just get it all set up before we dive into any big projects. Um, really the biggest thing is like every project I've done, there's like a few outliers, but like every project I've done from the start of my YouTube and the start of really me building cars is like, it, it's escalated. Like, and it's not so much escalated, like in the sense of I'm escalating it for views. It's escalated in the sense of I've pushed myself to do things that I had never done before. Mm -hmm. You know, like with the vet, I, I had done a bunch of fab work at that point. When we started building that car, I built exhaust, I built intercooler piping. You know, I made my own intercooler out of a core, like stuff like that. But I'd never built headers and I'd always wanted to build headers. And so the vet, I, I didn't necessarily need to, I could have done some off the shelf headers, but I built headers, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I learned and progressed and every car we've stepped it up a notch and I've learned something in the process. And I think the most enjoyable thing for me that it, in all of this is the learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like learning. I like progressing. I like that feeling of not knowing how to do something and then knowing how to do it, learning how to do it, doing it ourselves instead of paying someone. That's why we also, uh, me and Josue, we work on the shop stuff. And, you know, we did a lean-to. And you know, it was, oh, this is supposed to be a two-by-eight, not a two-by-six, and this and that. And there's all these things that we did wrong. But at the end of the day, we did it ourselves. We learned from it. And we get to take that into the next time we do something like that. Mm -hmm. So... I really want to get my shop dialed in. Um, I want to branch out into other motorsports. Um, I will say doing Drift Week always just like, if I could just do Drift Week like three times a year, I wouldn't need to do anything else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drift Week's definitely the best, the pinnacle of motorsports oh, that I've bitch. experienced. What? Why did that? Oh, bitch. <laughs> oh, <God. That's> <laughs> no, for real. Like I was thinking about it today just now i'm like this is really like the best combination of things you know this trip's been really cool because i brought like normally i just cycle out my drift tires in the rear of my car and i had sticky front tires but mm -hmm. i brought a set of sticky rear tires really just for the dragon but i ended up at every track uh either in the morning or in the evening or both like when i was done and out of tires just grip driving it and it was like, I had a blast just grip driving it. And it added like a whole nother layer of things. Oh my God. One second. Sorry, I, I interrupted. I'm bad at that. No, it's fine. I should introduce, I'm sharing track time. We could just have time attack people driving around the track at the Dude, same they time. they do that at grip paying life, to and do it's it. insane. Do you, with you time can attack drift people around come? them. Uh, probably not. Maybe, but probably. Anyway, sorry, go back to your, your dreams, Ooh, your five-year plan. You did, what if you did time attack week? with drift week that's what combined. i'm saying combined yeah i think time attack people would come that would be because there's nothing like that damn Ooh. it this could be one of those things Josue 
when we were riding in the car, sorry, I'm pointing to Hillside, he's over there. Uh, when we were right, he was riding with me in the car and we were doing the grip driving. He was like, it's like we're bringing grid life to drift week because they do that where uh -huh. like the drift cars get to drift around the grip cars and the grip cars will take people for laps. So like you're like riding in a car and there's like a drift car blasting past you. Like it's a pretty cool concept. And like we were doing that. We were like grip driving. I chase cam some people. So I don't know. I think I think this might be, be fun. Cool. Just add 10 of them to the next trip and see what right, happens. Just see what happens and let them. Oh, God, this is such the a good idea. The only problem is they're competitive and like. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, we can just toss up some timing equipment and let them rip. Yeah, you have to find like a bunch of people, kind of like. We just went to place. my five-year goal now. No, I'm right. joking. Get back to uh, yours. All right, sorry, sorry. Uh, Drift week's great. O other motorsports. I really want to do some drag racing stuff. Some like no prep drag racing. I'd really so build-wise, like I'd like to build uh, like a no prep drag car here soon. I'd like to build. I. I'd really like to work into you know, between these other few projects that I've got going on in the meantime, like finishing my shop, my grandma's old Monte Carlo. I bought my grandma's old car back. She had it when I was a kid. She picked me up from kindergarten in it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember sitting in the back of that car and I always wanted it. So anyway, I bought that car. I'm going to build that car like mildly. I want to build a no prep car, start messing with that. But at, in that time, I like to collect some more shop equipment, mill, lathe, you know, get my loft set up and built more organized, whatever. And then I'd like to do like just a all out tube chassis build. Mm -hmm. Like the only cars builds that I see on the internet that really get me off that I'm like, that is sick, is like the super fabrication intensive projects and the ones that like, I have so many small details. Like there's like 3D Magic Mike, um, uh, Ryan Turek's, his formula is super, but also his, his scout, stout, scout whatever truck thing build that was like a tube chassis build there's a bunch of these tube chassis builds and it's like everything is custom fabricated and like if you got a mill you're you know milling out your cantilever rocker arm for your push rod suspension and and doing all those little things like that is what keeps me building cars that is what i enjoy the most about building cars is like fabrication creating something mm -hmm. you know like that it brings me the most satisfaction so i'd like to to move into you know set up my shop in a way that we can move into doing like a full-on tube chassis build and originally it was going to be like uh I, i've always wanted a Datsun 510 so like find some old Datsun 510 body build like a tube chassis like three rotor dog box like crazy thing with slicks you know and put like do it to where you can like set the body on it and like bolt it on you, so you know want to I mean? build like a circle track car like i have kind of but with like an old steel body and me do all the fab work so you want to make it really complicated and for no reason. Yeah, yeah. But the, okay. see, that's the point, right? <laughs> so the idea of this build is every project I've ever done, for the most part, mm -hmm. besides like smaller projects, has like needed to be done for a reason. Like I built yeah. my Miata. I was drifting my Z. I wanted a real cage car to drift. When I mm -hmm. built my Vet, we're trying to get it done for competition. You know, like, and and we took our time and we were late to getting it out to comp, but we made sure we built it right. You mm -hmm. know, and on a side tangent that's another topic it's something that's so funny when it comes to doing youtube is you know you'll get all these people that are they pop in in the comments and i think the problem is a lot of them just read the title and thumbnail of each video and they don't really watch the videos mm -hmm. and they're like oh you're milking this project you're milking it you're milking it like, like you're making it take a long time on purpose but then at the same time if you were to rush it, get it done, and then it breaks, because that's what happens every time you rush something and get it done, mm -hmm. they'd be the first to point the finger at you and be like, ha, ah, you don't know how to build cars, you know? So it's like this, you can't please everyone, but this conundrum of like, people are gonna tell you you're taking too long if you take your time, but if you rush, then you're gonna break it, and people are gonna tell you you're an idiot for breaking it. So we, we just, I'm not, we ignore that, and we, we took our time, and we mm -hmm. made sure everything was right. And it showed. I mean, we literally our first test day, we didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. We just drained the catch can. And are you talking it. about the Corvette? Yeah. So you were talking two things. One, you were talking about the tube chassis. Is that like an ultimate YouTube channel project because you I can go forever? It's the, and it's I think never that's ending? part of it. I think, like, I don't know how great the content would do, but my vet build I didn't think would do that well video wise because mm -hmm. I'm like, people are tired of watching drift car builds and it did really well because it was a lot of detail. So mm -hmm. I think maybe it would do well. And like for me, I want to build a car that doesn't have to be done for any purpose. You know what I mean? Like it could be a two, three, four year build where like 
the finish line isn't the goal, like the journey is the goal. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just about enjoying, because I, I used to not even understand that frame of mind. You know, I'd see people do something and they'd make something like super complicated and really nice, but like, you're like, you could have done it this way and saved yourself like a week's worth of work. But it's, I, I, it took me a while to realize that it's not about getting, it doesn't matter if it ever gets done. You know, the joy of it is the project itself. And I, I want a project like that. And do you want to remain like a, a fabrication channel and like project channel? Or do you want to like become a lifestyle channel? I don't want to be like a lifestyle that? channel. Okay, so you don't want to go to like LZ tour type giant things around the world. Or like, I shouldn't say that. I should say like Taylor Ray tour events. No, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, so you don't want to become like hype beast. No, I don't have any interest in that. I don't. Why? It's just not me, you know? Like I just mm -hmm. like to be a normal guy. I like to build stuff and I enjoy sharing it with people, but you know, and, and I think every YouTuber or whatever feels this way, but like, I'm, I know I'm not anybody different. I don't feel like I'm anybody different or special. You know what I mean? And like, I don't, I don't like trying to, to me, it would be weird to try to like capitalize on that. Like that would then mean accepting or believing that I am different, you know? I don't know if that makes any sense. No, I'm just not that, I'm just not that type. Like, you know, you see people who like, uh, they get new wheels for their car and they're like blurring out the photo and they're like, <laughs> sneak peek drops Tuesday of the new wheels. And I'm just like posting on my Instagram story, like, here's my new wheels. This is cool. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm just never been the type to like build hype behind things. Even when we did like a merch drop and a giveaway, like it was just like, here you go. <laughs> you know, like there's no, I'm just not a hype beast. And I don't, I don't want things to be centered around me. You know, I don't want some event that's centered around me and whatever. I, I'd like to go drive and drive different events, but- uh, But your audience would like to come see you. And yeah, they yeah, would so like to fine. get excited. Like coming, coming to your event is fine, but I don't want to do like, I would like to do like a Taylor World Tour in the, or, or US tour with the bus setup that we got in terms of like just me going to other tracks, mm -hmm. but not like uh, me creating my own events. You know what I mean? And like, it's like this big, Thing Good, stay show. off my turf. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm joking. <laughs> I know, but I, don't, I just don't want to do that. I would like to travel and do, do those kinds of events. I, um, I realize I, I thought your question was like, do I want to like create my own line of events? And I'm like, I don't want to do oh, that. Oh, no, I just meant like, it wasn't exactly more. your line of events, but I mean, did you want to capitalize on your fame and do something hype beast huge? It doesn't have to be like the Taylor Ray tour. It could be um, you going to these things and like, how do you say? All of our buddies all around the world right now that are at Ebisu, they're like, I'm at Ebisu and look at my things. How right. do you say that? You're more like, let me show you how I built this thing. Yeah, Not okay. like the act of me doing something is right. exciting. And they are put into the predicament of like, they have to show you an exciting lifestyle and get excited for mm -hmm. the camera. Mm -hmm. What's up guys, you know? Yeah, I can't do that. So. I can never be fake and that was something I no, they're not was, all fake. No, you no, just no, threw no, everybody under the that. bus. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying they're fake. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, like, for me to seem enthusiastic about something overly enough to where it comes through on camera, I would have to be fake. Mm -hmm. But it's like part of that is, you know, I, this is something I realized kind of early on. It's, you know, we've been doing this stuff a lot longer than a lot of people have. You way longer than me. But, you know, not the, it takes a lot more to get me like super excited to where I'm like, ah, oh, this is amazing on camera. Like mm -hmm. it takes like some really special moment, you know, whereas like you see the kids that are kind of early into YouTube and like they're early, they're first getting into cars, like everything's that exciting, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just different, you know? Yeah. So like for me to get that excited, which I have plenty of times in videos, it, it has to be something special. And I, I couldn't fake that reaction just to maintain that image. Yeah. Of like, this is what I do. Guys, I am so excited for the color of my new wrap. It's Let gonna be revealed you. at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard yeah. Time. Okay, so you don't wanna go to that level no. to like promote merch and stuff necessarily. You just wanna keep doing your thing. You wanna remain a build channel. You wanna kinda stay core to your roots. You wanna have just the projects be the next step. Mm -hmm. You don't want the next step to be Me. following about somebody else. Okay, that right. makes sense. Yeah, I like my channel being about the projects. And I mean, that is like, I've thought about it, that is a bad business model in the sense that the more it's about you, the more it doesn't matter what you do, mm -hmm. um, which is probably why- You might like, transcend that at some point though, where it doesn't matter because your audience has been with you so long. Yeah, a lot of them have. And like, 
you know, a lot of my more universal stuff does better in views, like shop stuff, trailer stuff, whatever. But I just, I, I, when I started my YouTube, I had no idea what YouTube was. Mm -hmm. You know, Adam just approached me. Like, me and Adam had met through BC. I was putting coilovers on his car through a VC sponsorship thing. We became friends. Um, he started drifting. I started riding BMX, whatever. One night, he was like, you should start a YouTube channel. You know, he told me. I didn't ask him. I didn't even know what it was still at mm -hmm. that point in time. You know, Cody had told me, like, this guy has a YouTube. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> I thought YouTube was for, like, rally videos and you know, car crashes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he told me I should start a channel and I was like, what, what am I gonna make a channel about? You know, like I didn't, I didn't know what was on YouTube. So my thought was like, it has to be some sort of like teaching thing, right? Like that was what I assumed it had to be. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna do like how to drift videos and like how to work on da 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 da, like that kind of like informational in the garage videos. And then when I started, you know, I was around Adam and these other YouTubers and I realized that's not necessarily what it was. Like. I, oh, you film like your day-to-day -day life and going to do this and going to do that. So I kind of transitioned into that and it just never fit me. Mm -hmm. Like I just was never good at it. I, I, and I, you know, I'm just not that type of person, you know, like I don't want to share every moment of my life and, you know, make things super personal. And I feel like when you get that personally, you get a lot more of like the sluice that come at you, you know, like people that are like digging deep to like, find something and notice, oh, oh, you know, Jose in this video looked at you a little funny. I bet it's because of this thing, you know, because they know so much about your life. And I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't need people knowing that much about my life. Like, I just want to build cars and share those projects with people. Makes sense. Anything else to think about in the future? Because like, question. I'd also say like, you could go drive Drift Masters, you could do D1, you could do Formula D, you could go do some time attack thing and build the world's fastest car with all the aero. I want to do you no could build... prep and go so, do some of the sketchy, crazy no okay. prep races. So you want to do illegal no, 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 no prep. prep racing at night no, where no, no, dudes wanna... flash lights at you and I want to do the guns. legal the legal ones. Okay. Where it's, it's at night, but, but it's on a track kind of you thing. You get excited about the illegal oh, ones. I do. Just like we got excited about illegal street drifting back in, or mountain drifting, but you want to do the legal version of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do you get so excited about it? Because you watch the videos and you're genuinely excited? Yeah, the videos okay. genuinely get me excited and I had no interest in drag racing for a long time mm -hmm. and no prep kind of got me interested in it. And it, now it's starting to change and whatever, but no prep drag racing is interesting because it's not, all about money it's not just like you go spend a bunch of money you have this crazy car like it's going to be fastest like you do, you got three thousand horsepower and like you might only be able to use 800 you know mm -hmm. it's the the surface becomes more of an equalizer now it's still always a money game right because you could go hire some tuner dude who's really good at this and wins races pay him like 10 grand to come to your race and tune your car right mm -hmm. but it's less of a money game and that's what always turned me off about drag racing was like Okay, you're gonna race this guy, you know he goes faster than you. Okay, cool, so like. When you build a car like that, will you step away from drifting? No, 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 no. Drifting is forever. Okay. I just wanna try something different. And, and for content wise, you know, people really, I think the drag racing stuff is easier to get excited about because there's a kind of like a quantifiable goal. Like let's say you build a car and it's like, how fast is it gonna go? Okay, it went this fast and then you, put a different turbo on it and now it goes this fast and then you go to this race and you lose and then you upgrade this and then now are you gonna win at the next race because you upgraded that? Mm -hmm. You know, whereas with drifting, unless you're doing comp stuff, it's there's no, it's like you could build whatever car, like that Rolls Royce Hoonigan thing, you know? And it's like, I'm, that, I didn't have any interest in that because I'm like, of course it's gonna drift. Like, what is your definition of drift? Like it'll just spin the tires and maintain a angle around a corner, you know? So there's no, with drag racing, you can see like something going faster and you can see the progression. Whereas I like you that. You don't get that with drifting. And I think that helps suck the audience in more to be like, oh, I wanna know if it went faster. Whereas like if I make a bunch of upgrades on my F80, which I did, it's like, it's still gonna drift just mm -hmm. like it drifted before. You know, like there's, not, there's nothing to be like, get excited about coming back to watch it and see what happened. Are you actively going after a new audience and picking up audiences in different little sectors and you're like, now I've got the, no. the drag racing people. No, no. So you're not going around collecting a new audience or anything no, like that I or just, breaking into it? I pretty much just like to do whatever I'm interested in. And like, I, 
stumbled into drag racing, like the no prep, really the street racing stuff first and then started learning. I'm one of those people like, uh, I have like an addictive personality. So whatever I do, I do like hard, like I'm gonna learn everything I need to know about it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I just kind of like went on a kick, like learning as much as I could about it, like watching videos and not, I don't watch like how to videos. I just watch videos and try to retain, pick up information. And I, I like it. I think it's interesting. I think it's neat. So I want to try it. I, I could go do it and be like, this is terrible. You got to wait like four hours before you make a pass. And I'm like, this is silly. Like, I don't want to do this. And that's fine. Then I got to build a car. <laughs> I got some experience. I got to try it and then sell the car, whatever. Or I could do it and be like, this is the greatest and thing And you at ever. least get the whole build thing and you get all your enjoyment out of the build. Right. How much enjoyment do you get out of like drifting versus the build? Like driving? The yeah, driving. driving versus the building. So 50-50, 90-10? I would say it's probably 50-50 which is weird to me because I had someone tell me that when I was younger, that they like building cars more than they like driving them. And I was like, that's just an excuse for saying you suck at driving or something. Yeah. You know, like you just don't want to And then you realize people have air conditioned shops. Yeah, that And that a lot. changes the equation. Oh, it does. Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> You're like, you now know, I enjoy working on the having car. Having an air conditioned shop, having a nice organized work. For the longest time, all the way up until my house, which I've had for three years now, I was always in a shared workspace and everyone I shared workspaces with was not organized. And I am very OCD organized about my stuff, especially mm -hmm. my work areas. Like it can get a little cluttered and messy, but I'll clean it up. And like, I can't function if like, like right now when we go back, the shop is a disaster from us like thrashing to get the car here. And like, I'm gonna have to go through and clean it. Like I just like a very organized workspace and I didn't have that forever. Mm -hmm. And now I finally have like my own workspace that I can just keep clean and organized and just enjoy working in. And it's like, I don't know. It just, I enjoy it so much more. And then having AC and having the right tools and learning the different skills. So you're like, oh, we're gonna do this project. Oh, cool. I can build my own headers for that. You mm -hmm. know, like we've already built a set of headers. Now we get to build another set of headers. Like, you know, I guess that's just like uh, satisfying and rewarding. I would say I probably still enjoy driving more. Like let's say 60, 40. It depends though, because like driving someone, has a dopamine and stuff and everything else where like you're like, ugh. Yeah, driving's like the high. Yeah. But I guess. But you can build for a lot longer and get a more sustained feeling. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I was gonna say. And like, I don't necessarily get bored of building. Like if I'm doing a bunch of different fab work on the car, I guess you could apply that same thing to drifting. I was gonna say if I'm doing a bunch of different fab work on the car, like I still, like I enjoy it, whereas like, Let's say I'm driving the same track and I'm not tandeming with anybody. Like I'm gonna get, eventually like I'm not gonna feel anything when mm -hmm. I go out on track, you know? I'm not gonna feel any bit of excitement. I'm just doing the same lap over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, I get that. Whereas I feel like the fab work stuff's like more sustainable, like you said. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more rewarding where you're not being so destructive with an object or tires or anything else. So you end up with like a better and better object in the end. Whereas with drifting, sometimes you're just destroying <laughs> it's something. It's getting worse and worse. Yeah. So like you could only drift so much before you're broke, the car's dead, all these different things. I think that is a big part of it. Cause like coming to Drift Week with the F80, you know, like I've gotten better this trip about A, not worrying about it as much. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, it already did a trip, you know, whatever. And B, driving it harder, like tandeming it. But it's like, that's always like that fine line. And with a car like that, I'm like, oh, like, should I throw another set of tires on and risk breaking it? or like crashing it or should I just like call it a day? You're right now I can make it to the next state. <laughs> right, so I'm like always straddling that line of like I'm having fun but I'm thinking about when I should stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas with fab work and, and building cars, you're just like go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And so. you can just like redo mistakes and. Yeah, that's true, yeah. All right, well thank you so much for sharing all that with us. We're gonna keep this one pretty short. Is there anything you'd like to add as like a, your one moment off this or the last drift week that was like the most Ooh. emotional and like a little tender, tender thing? I don't know if there's anything tender. Um, I had an amazing time driving with everyone last night. Yeah, that I, I would say that was probably the most fun. That or today, today. Oh, oh, this felt just like being up on Hoppo. What was the mountain we were on, Hoppo? Uh -huh. Street drifting? Um, yes. It was amazing. Yes. Uh, I, like we had that vibe last night where we were so pumped. Yes. There was smoke coming off the cars and the light and hitting it in the forest. All right, you're just cruising. And the cars so are just like idling with their hazards on, like yeah. off in different places. The, the leaves are being kicked up in the, yep. you are always in front because you're the fastest car, but the leaves getting kicked up by the car in the autumn. Yeah, that's true. I didn't get to follow at all. 
Um, I would say definitely uh, that last night was a great time. And today, you know, like after last night, I didn't think about the fact that we didn't mention that we like we just kind of like a few of us went. And I was like, oh, I don't think there's going to be that many people that like come tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know. And then I show up at the general store and there's already like 10 people there. Mm -hmm. And then like it ended up being like 30 plus oh, wow. cars. Like, I worked on my laptop, so I didn't even see it. It was a huge, was I, good? I have to show you some pictures. Like there was at least 30 cars. Amazing. Like pretty much all of Drift Fleet came. And, you know, I've come up here several times and it's just me and my buddy Ben, you know, we'll bring like Raldo and Jose, sometimes they'll come with us, but it's like two cars, mm -hmm. you know, it's just the two of us. And maybe like one guy will go rip with us. So like <laughs> to go from that, to go to all these same places and take like a 40 car train through it and and to see people's excitement like the germans they were so funny because we you know i told them about it and they were asking if we were going to drift or grip and i'm like you should grip drive like i promise you <laughs> you'll enjoy it like mm -hmm. plan to grip drive i promise you it'll be more fun than you think and so then we get to the base of the dragon and they're like yeah you know i feel like this is probably like similar to the roads we have in the alps you know like it's fun like it's cool you know and then we do the road and we come back and they're like you did not uh, over promise on this like <laughs> this was amazing like this was so much fun you know like they were shocked they had a great time I'm glad and that was just really cool to see I was and there was a uh, someone else who wasn't didn't want to drive their car mm -hmm. and they were gonna ride because they were nervous and I was like dude no like, yeah you're gonna be fine like just bring the car don't drive outside your limits and they were like oh my god I had such a great time like I'm so glad I drove my car you know so it was just a lot of fun it was a lot of fun to see people's reactions because they went into it. A lot of people went into it thinking, like, I've got a drift car. Yeah. Like, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to be fun. And then they had a good time. I think also you were kind of in the lead of everything. And sometimes you're an introvert around people. I'm not really an introvert. No, but people. I mean, like, you don't go out of your way to go run around and be in front of people. Yeah. And you were in front of everyone and you were in control of the moment. And everyone had their experience through you as the ringleader, That's true. which was great, which I don't think you do a lot of the time. No, never. Do. Um, and you felt the energy off everyone, which you probably don't normally feel the energy off of everyone directly. Like you're the tuning fork right. at a normal event That's or like point. working on cars. I feel that tuning fork thing. You're like everyone comes yeah. up to you because I'm in charge. You were in charge yeah. today. No, that makes a lot of sense. It's an interesting feeling, isn't it? it? Is. Like you're responsible for their excitement and when it goes right. well, you're just like, ooh, you're like tingling. You're yeah. like, everyone had an amazing time. Right, right. Yeah, you did a wow. good job. Oh, thank you. Um, and yeah. you were also giving everyone the experience that you had had. You're like, come on guys, nibble on this. I've been <laughs> here before. Let me right. take you to the roads and do that. Right. Um, yeah, I wasn't trying to have like a new experience. I was like, I want you, you guys to it. experience this because this whole thing is so cool and not a lot of people know about it and mm -hmm. i mean the first time i drove here was with adam and me and matt were in our drift seas and mm -hmm. I'd, I'd always heard of it and i thought it'd be cool to come but and adam mentioned we were stopping on the way and i was almost like oh i might skip that like i don't want to you know it's in my drift car like it's gonna suck and i had the most amazing time mm -hmm. and i was like dude i had told my buddy ben when i got back i'm like we've got to go to the dragon you know and uh, now we come up here like a couple times, two, three times a year. So that's awesome. It's fun to share that experience. And that's why I was like trying to push people. Like, I understand you guys want to drift and like, it, it will be fun if that gets set up properly, you can go do that. That's fine. But I'm telling you, you're going to have more fun ripping through these roads as a group than you think you are. Roads are really dangerous, by the way, if mm -hmm. anybody's I'm watching. Surprised. Nobody has, so nobody, we haven't had any issue. One person went off grip driving. And they had to tow his car back on the road? Yeah. Yeah, but you could easily die up here. Oh, yeah. No, I'm surprised with how many people we had. Nobody drove outside their limits. I, and I think a lot of people came into this like, why are we doing this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they were like, if it's not drifting, like, I don't want to do it. And then at the mm -hmm. end of it, like, they had a good time. The Germans, I saw them when I was pulling in to go get lunch afterwards, or like almost dinner time. And I was like, making sure they knew the, the fun way to get back to here. And he's like, oh yeah, we're gonna hit the dragon again. You know, <laughs> like he was so excited about it. And I was like, this is awesome, you know? I love, I, I think this is probably just natural human instinct. I, was, I love sharing something with somebody and them enjoying it. Mm -hmm. That's why it really sucks when someone won't give you that satisfaction of yeah. telling you whether or not they enjoyed it. You're trying to make them watch One Piece and they refuse? Yeah, I don't watch that. Yeah, I know, exactly. It's a joke. <laughs> I, <but> yeah. <laughs> You're like, watch this special thing to me, and they're like, nah, I'm good. Dude, the worst is if, <laughs> if you, you're showing someone someone and the, something, and they're watching it, 
and they get up to like go to the bathroom and you ask them if you, they need you to pause it and they say no. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, they like someone's driving out there with you. They just, they're like, we're good. We come home now. Yeah. All right. Well, I had an amazing time. I hope we can keep making amazing adventures with everybody on drift week like this. I agree. Um, it's getting so hard to think up new things. Imagine my stress, I'm on number eight. Everyone has to have something like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Something that makes the individuals feel special, included, makes get everyone like together. a bunch of track days. Yeah, a family, and you make it like a Drift Week family. All these people, they all feel like they're best friends. Right, no, I mean, it's I, crazy. I got that experience almost even more this trip than the last trip mm -hmm. of just like, you know, making so many friends like some people i knew like off the internet you know like like the 945 garage guys like i you know i knew them from instagram i got quarters from them but you know actually hanging out with them and just a lot of people and that was kind of neat and i can't imagine my only regret that i have when i come here to drift week is that i didn't start coming sooner and i don't have like six other drift weeks of memories yeah i'm pretty salty that i i feel that way back. with ebisu i'm like i went in 2014 i wish i went in 2005. right yeah i missed it especially because you're like i had the means right yeah i didn't i was literally invited old. literally part of the original crew Dang. you didn't come oh me but you yeah. don't come to anything I do now. I've gotten better. There were reasons, and I've gotten better about it. Yeah. I became, like, too much of a homebody and liked my routine, and I was just like, I'm just going to work in the shop building cars. And uh, it, it, took, it really took that drift week to – me and Josue were just having this conversation. It took that drift week to break me out of that routine, mm -hmm. that routine craving, you mm -hmm. know? Like, every time I go on a trip, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to break my routine. Like, I'm not going to watch the show that I watch at night. I'm not going to order from the... You know, it sounds stupid, but... No, I get it. I have way. a kid, and it's like that. Yeah, I have this routine, you know? And I like my routine. I hang out with my dogs in the morning while I drink my coffee. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to... I can't, like... I'm dreading breaking that routine, yeah. you know? And then the last drift week, I was gone so long that the routine, like, what routine? Like, it was so far gone... And then also we're constantly moving, so like no new routine develops. Eric, life is fine without any sort of routine. Like I'm yeah. fine. I'm having a great time. I'm not stressing about it. Like this is still great. Like what was I so worried about? Of like leaving my routine. People are gonna think I'm crazy. So I feel like your therapist. <laughs> I'm like you had an addictive personality. You were addicted to a routine. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I guess what so. does that I say mean, about that would, you? That would make sense. I do have an addictive Now you're addicted to Drift Week and you're trying to get me to do three a year. As I <laughs> break off and do one a year, I'm like, I'm going to die, everybody. I have to uh, stop. Two. No, I'm just kidding. Um, mm. But yeah, that Drift Week got me out of that routine. It was a weird feeling because like... I'm addicted to them, by the way, too. I want to do two. It's too much work. Yeah. So. Um, but that trip, the combination of constantly no routine, like never being able to settle into a routine... And, and being around people, you know, like there was never a time where I wasn't around since we all stayed at the same Airbnb. It's like, Wick, you know, you guys will leave to the track, but like Wicknick and his guys were up later and then me and Ben are hanging out with him in the morning. Then you go to the track and you're with people, you're always around people. Mm -hmm. And I got so used to that again that when I went back home, it was just like editing like by myself. <laughs> I was just like, this sucks. Yeah. Like I felt, I felt almost like weird going back it's to hard to go routine. back just like coming back from japan and stuff because like japan you come back if you remember being jet lagged you're like i'm alone and i'm jet lagged at 4 a.m <laughs> yeah, yeah you there's no one to weird. hang out you're like tears you're like i'm sad <laughs> yeah 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 drift like week that. is like that too because you get on a chemical high all these ad like adrenaline from the track dopamine and serotonin and like all these friendly chemicals and you're outside and you're getting sunlight and wind and you're in new areas and you're seeing big trees when we go through the redwood forest suddenly you just go home and like you're taking out the trash and brushing your teeth going to the store mm -hmm. yep. yeah all right well thank you so much for sharing these experiences thank you for enjoying drift week I, I really just like you taking people through the dragon i really enjoy taking people on these trips because this is my imagination and i'm trying to like create moments you for do a people great and stuff. job Thanks. i don't mean to toot your own horn in these but drift week is no uh, go ahead an amazing experience <laughs> uh my buddy had commented on my Instagram post about Drift Week and was like, oh, you're really making me want to do Drift Week. And it's like being here, you're mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? You didn't already want to do Drift Week? How am mm -hmm. I making you want to do you should, you should, This should already be your goal. Like, mm -hmm. what? You know, like, I don't know. Just being here, you're like, this is the best thing ever. And I'm trying to go find the next thing to go do. Yeah. Although I think this has, I'm getting so tired and so worn out and out of ideas 
Um, I don't like, think they all have to be super unique and original. Like No, but like this moment here, it's like summer camp for adults while being like on a Japanese toge mountain road yeah, okay. in our drift cars with elite drivers. Again? We could, but I'm just saying, like, I want to do new things because you feel pressure, just like you with your YouTube channel. You don't want to build this, another turbo Corvette. You yeah. want to give people something new, and that's really tough because Drift Week 9 is going to be a repeat of Drift Week 6 because I really want to do it again because um, it was one of, like, but the highlights. But it's like there's ones. a lot of people like me who didn't, that didn't do it. Yeah, so yeah. it's just like you're just going to get a swap in of new right. drivers. But we'll never be in Texas doing that stuff with for James Dean time. again. Yeah, for the first time. We're like, imagine you're just like, whoa, James Dean's like on track with me. And then you're like, next day, James Dean's on track with me. Next day, James <laughs> Dean's on track with me. Next day, James Dean's on track with me. Next day, James Dean's on track with me. Right. You're like. This is wild. Yeah, and there's no line. You're just like, pull up, you know, drive. Like, it's crazy. The no line is the best part. All I have to do is like, figure out who's next. We could have the Shanahan brothers or something, or Daigo is too fancy. Yeah, I don't think. I don't know who don't, we could get. I don't get. think he'd socialize. No, but you could just like, find people i got nakamura here that was interesting yeah. you wouldn't think he would come i'd say don't worry too much about i mean i i get it we had know? chelsea we had all these people yeah i get what you're saying but i think i mean yeah, i i always draw parallels to drag racing and in drag racing they have the dragon drives and a lot of times they'll just do the same set of tracks over and like people still love it I know, but they're completely different. They go for one time or they go to say they were at it. You and I do it because we genuinely want to do it so bad we bleed it. And when we don't want to do it, we're not going to do it and it's dead to us. You know what I mean? Uh, this is, although you go to OSW all the time. Well, that's just because. Because <laughs> it's close. I'm good at, I'm, but, but you know what I'm saying. I'm also the type of person that can do repetitive things. Like it doesn't bother me to mm -hmm. like do the same thing. Right, but you're not going to drive all the way to Portland from Florida to go do the same thing again. It's too much effort. These are a lot of effort. <sighs> no, I probably still would. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just because like the whole experience is so much fun. Like yeah. I'd rather, I would, might as well do it again. Okay. Well, I'm having an absolutely amazing time. We're having a yeah. good time. Was sorry, was that slap. too violent? It was aggressive. Okay, it was aggressive. I'm, I'm sorry. My Zoomer friend over here is a little Zoomer? intimidating. What are you? Oh, like my age? Yeah, I think I'm Gen X. I think I am millennial. Millennial. I just said uh, Gen Z is like, I, I'm confused millennial and Gen Z. I'm millennial. Yeah. I think. All right. Well, thank you so much. We enjoyed you being here. I enjoyed We're not it. done yet. We have two <laughs> more tracks. These things go so long. They do. Um, it feels like I've been gone for like an eternity, but it's great. I that's good. It. All right. Thanks, audience. Bye. Is that it? Or do you still got another? And always, thank you to all the sponsors of Drift Week 8, and thanks to Taylor Ray for doing this interview, but thank you to ECU Master USA. They make great standalone ECU products and all kinds of other stuff that goes in your car. Go to their website, check them out. Valino Tires. We could not do this trip without their support because they bring thousands of tires and change them and dispose of them and do everything turnkey so all the drivers can sit back and just have an amazing adventure. Thank you to BC Racing Custom Coilovers, the most supportive coilover company in drifting. They've been supporting us forever, so thank you so much. NK Wheels. Thank you very much, NK Wheels. Been with us for a decade. Vape Tasia. He drives on the trip. Chris Finch, thank you so much for supporting Drift Week. Vape Tasia. Heat Wave. Big shout out to Heat Wave. They did a lot of help this year. So thank you so much to them. Go check out their sunglasses. Go buy something. Thank you so much for being so supportive and drifting. Just Racing. This is an engine machine shop out in Vegas. Go check them out. And all, they specialize in Jay-Z stuff, by the way. But I make them do my V8 stuff. And thank you to whatmonstersdo.com. Go to their website. Use the discount code EBISU for 20% off, I think it is. And just thank you for everybody for watching and everything else. Bye.